You are cordially invited to attend the inaugural ceremony and inaugural ball of president yet to be determined. Now depending on how yet to be determined turns out, you might be really excited or really depressed. But for the most part, wouldn't you be excited to be invited to such a historic event and such a powerful gathering? Wouldn't you begin to make every arrangement necessary to be part of that amazing moment? When invitations arrive in the mail, there's a certain degree of excitement and anticipation that, ar that arrives with the invitation. In our world of digital communication, an old-fashioned printed invitation is unique. It communicates far more than the pertinent information. An invitation also communicates welcome, importance, a promise of hospitality, and much more. An invitation says, you are important to me, and I want to share this moment with you. All of that and more makes the story of the wedding feast seem all the more strange. How could people hold the date for a great wedding banquet and then be so distracted by lesser things? How could people be so fickle, so capricious, so rude? How could people be so ungrateful, so unappreciative, so ill-mannered. And what about the embarrassment to the host, the one who invited them in the first place? Imagine having the food prepared and the table set and the decorations placed for a feast, and in the original context, a feast that would last for days, only to find that the very people to whom you have for whom you have prepared the feast are now offering excuses for why they cannot be in attendance. How are you, as the host, feeling toward those who have accepted other invitations over yours? You're beginning to experience the power and depth of parables. There are so many levels to the stories Jesus told, levels of meaning and importance that we have not even mentioned. Parables are not given to us to teach one lesson. Parables teach many lessons. That's why we keep coming back to them. But for today, let's focus on the image of a host who issues invitations and who receives only excuses. It's a party problem. Now, if this were a tale that was only about a first century wedding reception, we wouldn't be talking about it. The reason it is before us this morning and every morning is that the story is preceded by these words. The kingdom of God is like. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. There is a reason for this story. The story is meant to draw a comparison between the story and some aspect of what God's kingdom is all about. The story is meant to tell us something about God and what God is doing. God is like a host who invites people to a feast and receives pretty poor excuses from those invited as to why they are turning down the invitation. Wow. When you put it that way, it sounds pretty harsh, doesn't it? But isn't that what's going on? We may not have received golden, graved, gilded invitations from God to come to a banquet. 
But don't we receive hundreds of invitations from God to get involved in what God is doing? Aren't we being offered opportunity after opportunity to partner with God in expanding the borders of God's kingdom, God's sphere of influence in our world? (coughs) Aren't we invited to join with God in doing the work of justice, peace, and righteousness in our neighborhoods, cities, and world? When the cause of the poor and the truly left behind are before the world, we can see it as an invitation from God to include them, to care for them, to work on their behalf, that they can become what God intends for all of us to be, self-sufficient, self-reliant, and freed from the stress and worries of simply being. When the cause of some being treated unfairly and unjustly is before the world, we can see it as an invitation from God to stand with those who too often stand alone, to advocate for them, to speak to power on their behalf so that they can experience for themselves what we have experienced for ourselves, the fairness and impartiality that we take for granted every day. When the cause of the hungry and the thirsty is before the world, we can see it as an invitation from God to share from our own bounty and possessions, to meet their need, and to put our own resources to the greater use, ensuring that there will be food and water not only for today, but for tomorrow and tomorrow's tomorrow. When the cause of those locked in uh, in addictions, self-diminishing, life-diminishing power and bondage is held up before the world, we can see it as an invitation from God to open our hearts, open our minds, open our doors to share encouragement and hope and empowering those a slave to addiction to break free from their shackles and to embrace the life God created them to enjoy. When the cause of the planet's care is before the world, we can see it as an invitation from God to meet the commission God gave us to care for the planet we inhabit and to nurture its well-being, to heal its scars, and to ensure its life-giving power for generations to come. Here it is. While the world around us sees only problems and challenges, People of faith, every faith, can see these challenges and problems as invitations from God. These overwhelming trials and troubles that fill the headlines each and every day are in fact opportunities, invitations from God for those who are God's people to shine like the sun. These challenges and opportunities for people of God to accept God's invitation to partnership and collaboration will lead us to life. Let me share a true story with you. A couple of weeks back, a member of this congregation came to see me. This person told me that they'd saved a little extra from their household expenses and wanted to give it to the church to be used in a helpful way. The person wrote a check for $1,000 to help those who need a little extra help from time to time. Invitation offered. Invitation accepted. We're getting ready to begin a new year of mission and ministry. There are lots of people behind the scenes who make our mission and ministry possible. Teachers, team members, committee members, ushers, greeters, choir members, and other church musicians, and all kinds of people who make First Pres what it is, a living embodiment of who God is and what God is all about. Invitation offered. Invitation accepted. And in the year and then the years ahead, we will celebrate accomplishments and invitations accepted by those who came before us. This year, we will celebrate 25 years of the Fisk organ being at the heart of our worship and our cultural commitment to the city of Evansville. And in just a few years, 
We'll be celebrating the bicentennial of this congregation. 200 years of mission, ministry, and service to the people of Evansville and beyond. Invitations offered. Invitations accepted. God extends invitation upon invitation to us if we will just begin to recognize them. We might sometimes see them as obstacles and obstructions, but at their heart, they are invitations to join with God in bringing people to the banquet. This feast of life is not meant for just a few. It's meant for all. And God invites us to be living invitations, embodied invitations of God's offer of life and happiness to those who have neither life or happiness. So what will it be? A series of senseless excuses that are ridiculous at face value or a hearty and heartfelt count me in. There's the choice for now and evermore. Amen.